I think the role of smart cities in international discussions is really important now. I'm the Prime Minister's investment envoy to the Nordic countries, and the Nordic nations met recently in Reykjavik, and one of the key topics was smart cities, because as anybody who knows, if they go to Denmark or Sweden or Finland or Norway, this is a hot topic for those countries. Now, what we're seeing is an increasing interest from those countries, as well as from China and India, in what exactly is happening in the UK, who the leaders are in the different technologies, and how they can engage with them. And I think what's encouraging is I see more and more of an international flavour to the way in which the associate members of the group are actually participating in projects around the world. I think the opportunity for wealth or sovereign funds is really important. Uh, I've had dealings recently with the Norwegians and for 30 years they've quietly squirrelled away their resources in terms of oil and gas. And that means they have, if you like, an important piggy bank that they can use for long-term projects. This long-term thinking is integral to smarter cities. If you look at the investment in Crossrail, it's really about having a digital rail service delivered, not just something that is uh, complete and therefore will be uh, start becoming redundant in 10 or 15 years. It's delivering something that actually is repairing itself, able to provide the sensors and the technology that enables that railway to keep up to date. And that, in a sense, is what a smarter city should deliver. Long-term investment that's actually thinking about the life cycle of these assets, not just the short-term for upfront investment. The key thing for sovereign funds looking to invest in the UK is whether or not there's a long-term structure, a long-term decision-making program. And that's what we now have with the National Infrastructure Commission. In our dealings and our discussions, as different cities share experiences at the all-party group, that long-term vision is really, really important. Yes, I think the critical thing in terms of long-term investment is whether or not the regulatory framework is uh, understandable for the 20- or 30-year life cycle that pension funds operate in. Infrastructure is a really good area for them to invest in because it has a long-term life cycle. So the chance to renew our transport, to renew our utilities, to improve our broadband, to make sure that data, big data, is actually opened up, these are the big long-term opportunities that lie ahead. I've always taken the view that if we could make sure that our savings are invested in things that of themselves help improve our quality of life, it's got to be a win-win. So I'm a big fan of a government thinking about how it can best tap the long-term savings and funds that are there that are looking for a home for good, long-term, stable returns, rather than necessarily trying to go and secure commercial loans of that kind of investment. So for me, this kind of levering in of money that's already there looking for a home to invest in is the, is the right approach.